And that's where we need to make the difference is how do we build um, a social media presence? How do we build our brands that we that our consumers trust us? So they might not understand what's happening on our dairies, but what they see, they trust and they believe in. And so that's, a, that's gonna be a big lift for our industry. Peggy Coffin here from Up Level Dairy, and we are at the Adiseo VIP sales meeting. And I have with me today one of the speakers from today's session, Dr. Marissa Hake. Hey, Peggy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for joining, and thank you for being at this meeting today. Um, Dr. Hake, you just got done doing a presentation to this group on dairy sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so just give us the, the quick and uh, the easy bullet points. What were the key takeaways that you really wanted this audience of dairy nutritionists and dairy industry professionals to take away from your presentation on dairy sustainability? Yeah. So for today's presentation, I really wanted to zoom out um, and share with the folks of what are dairy consumers really thinking about? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, how are they making purchasing decisions? Are they really leaving dairy? Are they really seeking alternatives and what's happening there? And then, um, you know, pivoting from, okay, we're, we're, we know that ESG is important for our consumers. We know that there's a small subsection that's really starting to make purchasing decisions based on sustainability. What does that mean for our industry? Mm -hmm. um, and so talking about, you know, some of the key areas within the industry that we're focusing on. And then um, I kind of end the talk with there's some uh, some Marissa thoughts about the industry of, of what we need to be on the lookout uh, about in the future. So, um, you know, looking at how we um, we translate what we're doing um, at the farm level and within industry and then in all of our sustainability efforts back out to the consumers in a way that they will understand and accept. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smartamine M, the best in class rumen protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain their lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to milkpay.com. So you packed a lot into an hour. <laughs> and so let's just dissect that a little bit uh, and start with what you first shared about the consumer choice side. So what are some of the trends, the, the real trends that mm -hmm. you're seeing and the futuristic outlook you have on trends when it comes to the consumer um, choice to purchase or not purchase dairy? Yeah, you know, big picture is people are still choosing dairy, right? It's economical. It tastes great. Uh, people love dairy. So they're not quite leaving dairy. But what we're seeing is, um, you know, a, a, a subset of um, consumers are seeking alternatives. And most of the reason that they're seeking those alternatives is because they think it's better for you, because they think it's better for the environment. And and we're seeing this, obviously, with a younger subset population. Uh -huh. So um, so really, that's what it's gearing up is saying, OK, we we know how um, the baby boomer generation purchases. We, we know we have a pretty good idea on how millennials uh Purchase, but now we're looking at Gen Z and Gen X, and and how do we set ourselves up as an industry to really hear what they're saying and make the you know make not make changes or or you know present them with information that helps them feel good about purchasing dairy. But really, to boil it down, is is most people are still purchasing dairy or a dairy like product, which is telling us people want dairy. They want that. They want that taste. They want that nutrition. So how do we deliver it in a way that makes them feel like they have permission to make that choice? Oh, wow. So that's a, that's a big thought. And, and so you and your, uh, in your social media presence mm -hmm. as CatFit, you get these questions every single day yeah. of people that are asking about the choices that they make. And so what, what are some of the common questions that come up when it comes to the, as you talked about that concern that that younger generation has about the food that they're consuming and where it's coming from? I mean, when it really comes down top of mind, I, and I make this argument within the dairy industry based on what I hear, is we have to win in animal welfare and we have to win in sustainability. Those are the two big concerns of, of consumers. And when I talked about the younger consumer being more concerned with it, the younger consumer is also on social media, right? They're the loud, they're the loud ones. They're the ones talking about it. They're the ones saying, we don't agree with this, you know? And so 
or really need to listen to what they're saying um, and then provide them back. Not education. I, I always argue, I don't think the consumer really wants to be educated, right? Mm. But they want to trust. And that's where we need to make the difference is how do we build um, a social media presence? How do we build our brands that, we, that our consumers trust us? So they might not understand what's happening on our dairies, but what they see, they trust and they believe in. And so that's, that's going to be a big lift for our industry. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so as you just laid out here, Mm -hmm. this topic of consumer choice and really honing in on the audience and what they're looking for and the, the trust factor that's underneath all of that was a big part of what you shared um, today. Uh, And then also the other aspects that you share when it really comes down to this bigger picture Mm -hmm. of the sustainability impact on dairy. So speak a little bit more into that. Yeah. So I think we're all working towards the same goal in the industry, uh, but we just don't know how quite we're going to get there. Right. And it's really, honestly, it's going to take all of us. Um, I always say like sustainability shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't be complicated. Um, Yes. There's some, some complications within it, but the way I boil it down is, okay, we have to look at the, the farm level, right? Because that's where our major impact is. And so sometimes farmers are like, man, it just feels like they're, they're picking on us all the time, you know? And from a brand perspective and from an industry perspective, like we're not picking on the dairy farmers. It's just that, you know, up to 70% of the emissions for our product come from that stage. So we're going to put a large focus on the dairy, right? And then when we get down to how, how complicated is it? Well, we have cow poop, we have cow burps. We have cow food, and then there's a little sliver that's energy, right? Energy use on the dairy farm. So those are kind of the three buckets that I I like to break down and say, it's not that complicated. Here's the three areas that we're working in. Here's kind of the three areas or the areas within each one of those sectors. And here's some of the, the, the challenges for each one of those, right? And that's the way that I look at sustainability. And so, you know, today was great. You know, we talked about um, you know, the cow feed bucket and, or the, or the enteric methane, you know, the cow burp sector of, of how can we use feed additives to reduce um, enteric methane and, and some of these solutions. So it's really going to take the entire industry to come, come up with a solution. Uh, and so uh, you also shared your Marissa thoughts, yeah. your Marissa outlook. And some of that revolves around that bigger picture of implementation, of coming together, of collaboration. Mm-hmm. And so give us the, the down and dirty there. What did that look like? What, what, what's inside Marissa's <laughs> mind? Yeah. So when I'm uh, looking at how are we going to con- to really communicate out with consumers, uh, a couple of things come to mind for me is, is one, we need to come out with a punch in, in, in against kind of the alternative um, narrative. Mm. In my mind, um, you know, we see a lot of things of, of you should, you shouldn't consume dairy because it's really bad. And then these are better, right? So these alternatives are better for the environment or, or X, Y, and Z, right? And um, one, what we're not seeing is we're not seeing um, a, a U.S. dairy metric use. A lot of times they're using global dairy's impact and using that bigger number uh-huh. um, for a U.S. dairy product or a product alternative. So I think that needs to be adjusted to the region that it's in. Mm. Um, the other thing, too, is, is and I, I, I'm really big on this one, is we are looking at the um, environmental impact on a volume basis. And we really need to adjust that to a nutritional basis. Ooh. If we start looking at dairy in that aspect, that's going to be a very, very different story for consumers. Um, and then lastly, um, ex- oh, go ahead. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. So when you talk about just expanding that a little bit more too, for those out there listening, the yeah. volume ba- basis versus the nutrition basis. So yeah. are you kind of, re- you're referring to that um, like value of a calorie or value of a protein right? and, exactly. the, and tying it back to yeah. that. So a lot of times you'll see the, you know, the chart that'll say um, milk versus oat milk versus almond milk versus, you know, all these alternatives and the environmental impact for that. And it will be per liter of that product. And I don't think that's, that's, I think it's very misleading. If you adjusted that to be um, the environmental impact per calorie, uh, per gram of protein, then we're looking at a very different story. And even to add to that, if you're looking at not just on volume basis, but you're also looking at the digestibility and quality of protein, it's also a very, very different story for dairy versus plant-based proteins. So Mm. that's something that I'm working at and I'm very passionate about. (laughs) And then the last one that was kind of on my mind is, um, you know, as we are making all of these advances within industry, and we're looking at solutions, we have to be very, very careful 
to make sure that we have consumer buy-in around some of these new technologies. So I will use feed additives for an example. We have to be very careful to position that in a way that our consumers will accept that as safe and, and um, you know, uh, acceptable. I give the example of RBST. We lost a technology that did help with sustainability because the consumers perceived it as an issue and they were scared about it, right? They had fear around it. And so that's kind of my last call out is as we come up with these solutions, we really have to be cognizant of getting uh, consumer buy-in and making sure that they accept it. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing the summary of your talk on dairy sustainability from every aspect from the consumer level to the on-farm level and to the bigger picture of implementation and also impact on where you see this headed in our larger industry as well. So thank you, Marissa. Of course. Thanks for having me.